Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to discuss Gucci movie. Let's go right into it. Well, th th these are uh, very exciting books about uh, the legislative process. I'm studying to be a lawyer. You seem too nice to be a lawyer. <laughs> well, there are a few good ones. The dead ones. <laughs> So, of course, there is a cliché about lawyers being evil, mean people, and not trustworthy. In fact, I partially wanted to give up my law school. When I was in law school, I felt that I met some people in my law school that I didn't like, and I didn't want to become like them. And so a lot of therapy, uh, fast forward, I decided to be a lawyer with heart. Who cares? And it's possible. And I have to say so much joy to be different, to focus on people's need, what they want. So I don't face these type of comments a lot. And I actually face the opposite. I have been called the nicest lawyer they ever talked to. Just yesterday was flattering my ego. Anyway, so not I agree with that statement. Not all lawyers are evil people. Patrizia Reggiani. Patrizia, this is my father, Rodolfo. Delighted to meet you. I trust Adela has been keeping you amused. Picasso? Uh, no, 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 it's Clint. How silly of me. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's an easy mistake I've made worse myself. Must be worth a fortune. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, but you know, to me, art, like beauty, has no price. I made a reservation for us at the Gallia. Perfect choice. So, Patricia, uh, what, what exactly are your interests? I'm a very social person. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. A people pleaser. And uh, do you study? I work for my father's business. Ah. And his business is? Ground transportation. Wow, this is a really, really tough moment. So entering in this huge luxury company, Gucci family, and not being a lawyer or a doctor and um, not impressing the man of the family is, is very rough. Can you have a successful marriage if his parents don't approve, his father doesn't approve? I have to say many reasons for divorce are not only related to money, relationship to money or disagreements about money and sex, but also parents. Parents can be very, very powerful figure in the family because, because how it goes, we are all social human beings and it's it just it is what it is so I feel very bad for for her in this situation that she didn't prepare when he asked what's your interest I mean she she could have impressed him with something else than just saying um, I'm a people pleaser because that's not really the, I mean that's not my definition of interest but so um, yeah it's a very bad start I would say and it's hard to recover from that first impression. Where did you meet her? I met her at a party. Party? Yeah, look at Sarzana's house at the Palazzo Serbelloni. Yes, I know where the Sarzana's live. You know, <clears throat> there is a certain sort of young woman who makes their fortune from getting their hooks into someone like you. Well, yes, Father, but, but, but Patrizia is not like that. Well, 
I had Franco do a little investigation. I think she's after your money, like they all are. The Reggianis are truck drivers. Her father has a very successful transportation business. It is a... It is an empire. Oh, oh, oh. a truck driving empire. How many? How many what? How many trucks? 5,500? What does she transport? Garbage? Huh? Mafia. Listen, I, I give you everything. I give you this house. I give you money. You have a life. You, oh, what is it you want? What I want is to marry her. Live with her. Fuck her. Have a good time with her. Do what you want. Go away on holiday. Go to Sardinia. Whatever. But no, not marry. No, don't. Walk away. Listen to yourself. You're so bitter and you don't even realize it. Who cares what their family name is or, or how many trucks they have? You hide here in the past and you expect me to hide here with you? Not anymore. These are your ghosts. These are your ghosts, not mine. These are your regrets. Don't do this to me. You can't stop it. I can, I will, I will. I cut you from my will, I'll leave you with nothing. That's fine. I love her. You're making a big mistake. Oh, she's fine, but, you know, she's a, she's just a, a I love what she is. Well, 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 it depends on what state, country they are. Let's pretend they were in California. So basically, his father is disowning him for marrying the woman he doesn't approve. And of course it happened before. It happened in, um, it happened many times. And I don't wanna go into the names of celebrities, but the point here is, if I were his father, I would have discussed a prenuptial agreement because this is the time where if she feels, I mean, prenuptial agreement should have been in place in this, in this conversation anyway. And even, especially because he believes she's after his money. So he could have uh, talked to him about um, having a prenuptial agreement that not only gives her less rights than she would otherwise get under the law, but also prevents from draining the family finances because of alleged mistake decision by marrying her. And so instead he's pushing away his son when he could have actually had a better conversation and got more control because that's what he wants, right? So it's, it's very unfortunate to see that some parents react that way, and I, and I think he could have done better. That was a very admirable move on Maurizio's side of not getting, letting the fact that his family didn't show up uh, make the ceremony so awkward. I probably would have removed the chairs completely when I found out that nobody would show up and made it less obvious. And I can already say that the fact that his family doesn't approve of Patricia and the fact that they might have not even had a prenuptial agreement and that his whole family is against the marriage. Their marriage needs counseling. Counseling not only with them, but potentially slowly involving other family members 
to build foundation because it's going to be very tough to uproot such a long relationship he had with his family for the marriage. And we know the first year of marriage is the most difficult anyway. And now that they have this big challenge, it's, it's practically impossible for this marriage to survive. I'm a grandfather. Her name is Alessandra, like Maurizio's mother. So as we can see, his father father looks very sick, and it is very unfortunate that that when people get very sick, they come to their senses and and, and accept family members for for their decisions. And prenup or not, she chose um, a name of his ex-wife of. Um, so it, 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 may, it turned him around, which I'm, I'm happy to see here. Where did you get them? Uh, there is this charming little place by Notre Dame mm -hmm. de Lorette in mm, Paris. De Lorette. Notre Dame de Lorette. Right. De Lorette. Maurizio and I stayed there five years ago. Uh, we, we had the most amazing time. I begged Maurizio to take me there for my 25th birthday. And of course, he obliged. <laughs> as soon as we landed, we went to the Jules Verne restaurant in the Eiffel Tower. It's at the top. No, no, no. It's on the second floor. It was magnificent. <laughs> Later, we went to the Louvre. I'd always dreamt of seeing the Louvre. We arranged for a private tour. Thank God. Imagine all those crowds. I couldn't do they it. They just want to know where you got the macaroon, sweetie. I'm telling them. Yeah, you're feeling the story full of unnecessary details. I don't think our guests mind. They wouldn't say if they did. You're an unnecessary detail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's 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 a really tough one because here she is doing her best to express the story and somewhat impress the friends that how good he is that he obliged and took her to her 25th birthday. And now he is not only correcting her, but also in front of everyone. So I, I, I think this marriage starts to crumble because of basic attitudes of, of tact and communication skills can be learned in, in couple therapy. Some people just don't have the skill set and unfortunately communication is number one key to successful relationship. And unfortunately, because a lot of people can learn so fast and they don't. And here's one example how it crumbles the self-esteem. And when someone does husband or wife in front of everyone correcting, uh, another spouse, it just takes away that confidence, self-esteem, and it really is not worth it. At the end, who is he trying to impress? If his friends love him and care about him, let her finish her story. Be generous. I, I think that's a big mistake he made here. He worked for my father for 10 years and he never questioned him. I trust him. He's not the problem. I heard the way you spoke to me at lunch. He's not the problem. I was tired. Next time, do 
Don't embarrass me in front of those people. Those people are friends of mine. I've known most of them longer than you. He is the problem. Say it. Patrizia, I was tired. I'm tired. Then wake yourself up and say it. Okay. When you make me sneak around my own family. When you set father and son against each other and, and me against Paolo. When you second guess a person like a Domenico de Soleil. The only person my father trusted. These things have an effect on the environment I operate in. On me. Actions have consequences. I did that for you. I was being constructive. I'm not going to apologize for that. No thanks. My uncle is in prison and my cousin thinks I'm scum. You think that's constructive? Don't pin Gucci's problems on me, okay? I'm just here mopping up your fucking mess. I never asked for your help. Maurizio, we're only stronger together. The only thing I need from you is to stay away from Gucci before you cause any more damage. I can handle it by myself. Is that clear? Truthfully, I'm only getting involved because you are an incompetent little baby idiot. You're a fucking weak little brat. You really are only one half of Gucci. The shit half. You want a real man? Here, maybe you'll grow a little. Whew, this is the definition of domestic violence right there. She starts this conversation with high passion and emotion, which is probably culturally acceptable, yet he's not, he's not reacting the way she wants him to respond, react. And she starts grabbing him, insulting him. And remember, since 2016, domestic violence doesn't have to be physical, it can be emotional. She just committed domestic violence on him by calling him names, and he is pushing her back and physically attacking her, which potentially could create bruises, and it's also in itself domestic violence. And they both could get domestic violence restraining order against each other, and then the court would have to determine who is the uh, primary perpetrator. And it's really tough in this in this position. It seems like she started, but his act is is more severe than hers. So it's it, it would be for the judge to decide. But it's it's a really um, th this marriage is already uh, facing the toxic stage of dissolving. T looks like to me. <laughs> Where is he? I'm afraid he couldn't come. What do you mean he couldn't come? He had a business meeting in Paris. He's lying, and so are you. Maurizio is very busy, Patrizia. He didn't even have the decency to come to his daughter's last recital. What kind of a father is he? There will be a new arrangement. And why did he send you? Huh? Hey, Domenico, why did he send you? What are you, a little fucking messenger? He didn't have the decency to come here. He's too much of a coward to do it himself. I have the papers right here. Papers? Ah, oh, papers! I'm not signing any papers. You can tell him to come here and talk to me like a fucking normal human being. Maurizio said you and Alessandro can continue to live in the penthouse since he's no longer his primary residence. He's happy to extend payments until you are able to stand in your own two feet. Where are you talking about? He's... What are you saying? What are you saying to me? These are words, Domenico. I'm not talking to you. Come to my daughter's school. What the fuck is wrong with you? Shared custody, he wants... He wants to make this as easy as possible for both of you. Shared custody? Anything in these eyes that would let you think 
that I would ever let anyone ruin my daughter's life. Compromise her. Do you? Do you see that? You know that won't happen. I will relay the message. Get the fuck out of here. Whew, that's intense. So there are a couple things going on. Number one, um, this man serves as a messenger and the right word would be a process server. I don't know if he's serving her technically divorce papers. It sounds like not. He serves her some uh, settlement proposal papers. And um, when she says, I'm not gonna sign any papers, when if someone gets served with divorce, they are not required to sign, they're being served, period. And the process server at worst would testify in court that the, the papers have been given, even if she throws them away and throws them in his face, it doesn't matter. The moment he gives her the paper, even if he throws it at her feet, it's done. The service is complete. So it looks like it, it, ha it happens in um, Italy. So there might be a different type of law, but for the sake of this video, I'm gonna pretend we're in California and he could also get divorce from her by default if she's not going to cooperate. So the, the right response would have been probably taking the paper, going to the lawyer, consulting, getting better understanding. But it's, as you can see, divorces are highly emotional. And that's why I strongly recommend to get a therapist, to get a team, to get therapists, to get forensic accountant, to get, to get a lawyer, to get friends just get as much help as possible because the way she's acting it to me it's self-destructing um and and really not helpful for neither their child for divorce process it, it, she just makes it more difficult and that's something to discuss with a therapist and not um get at this uh, process server <laughs> That's him. Senor Gucci. Well, this could have been avoided with a good therapy every day. Her emotions drove her to the worst decision of her life by arranging a hitman to call her to, to kill her husband. Well, not only now she made it impossible to spend time with her child, she's now gonna go in to jail and she's not gonna inherit anything because she's a, a spouse who killed her spouse and she's not gonna get any spouse. She's not gonna get anything. So she just closed the door to any future she could have had by speaking to a lawyer, accountant and a therapist and accepting or offering a counter offer and having a good settlement. This is why it's important to get a team together. So this is the worst outcome possible that could have been prevented. Very sad to see, but avoidable with all the tools that are available. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye.